Hi, I'm a possum and I find garbage. And it's October, so I guess I gotta review a horror movie. You know, for Halloween or whatever. Uh... How about this one? Today's garbage is Dracula 3000. It says Infinite Darkness under the title like it's supposed to be a subtitle, but the DVD box, the IMDb page, and Wikipedia all just call it Dracula 3000. I don't know. Anyway, Coolio's in it. You kids like Coolio, right? Well, he doesn't like you. I mean, I, I guess he doesn't like much of anything now since he's, you know, not alive anymore. Listen, I don't know what to say for the intro, so maybe we should just... Blah, blah, blah. Oh no! It's Dracula 3000! I want to suck your blood. Not my blood. I need to sell that for cigarettes. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, he wasn't made well. The movie starts with a video recording of Udo Kier playing some kind of space captain, waiting for his spaceship to self-destruct. But it doesn't work, so he screams. All systems no! After a title sequence, we cut to 50 years later. Wait, 50 years? The back of the box says it was 100. Didn't whoever wrote this watch the movie? Anyway, we see a spaceship flying through space, and then we get a voiceover from the guy from Starship Troopers. Fourteen days ago, I got a tip from a friend at the Confederation that a large cargo ship, the Demeter, that had been lost for years, had been spotted in the Carpathian system. Carpathian system? F*** off. Okay, so this guy, Abraham Van Helsing, yes, really, is the captain of a salvage ship called Mother 3, and they're on their way to claim the Demeter, the spaceship that Udo Kier failed to blow up. We then get introduced to all the major characters the laziest way possible, by showing the profiles while a voiceover explains their roles and personalities. This is Humvee. All brawn, zero brains. Van Helsing and The Professor stare at an off-screen monitor which we never see because they didn't have the prop, in a scene that was shot entirely in extreme close-up because they didn't have a set either, while the navigator, Mina, wanders around the basement of a factory which the movie wants us to believe is the interior of a spaceship. We cut to a video log of Captain Guy talking about how they had engine problems and half the crew got sick with some mysterious disease. I have implemented strict quarantine procedures. No one found the log and it's not playing for any of these characters, so there's really no reason to be seeing it now within the logic of the movie. It just kind of cuts to it for the sake of giving exposition to the audience. Mina hears something moving around, so she runs through the same corridors a few times until she gets grabbed. But it turns out it's just her fellow crew member, Reginald Parker, also known as Humvee, played by Tiny Lister, who's also dead now, so he ain't gonna be in Zootopia 2. Van Helsing tells Humvee over the radio to check the CO2 levels. It turns out the air is breathable, so they take the gas masks off, because these trained astronauts went to the Prometheus School of Space Exploration, where they were taught to completely disregard the possibility of airborne pathogens. Humvee starts choking, but it turns out it was just a prank, and there's no HR department in space, so Mina just kinda has to put up with it. Van Helsing, the professor, and this other lady come aboard. The professor says he estimates the spaceship is about 50 years old, and it's revealed he's in a wheelchair, and not even one of those fancy motorized ones. Even in the year 3000, when interstellar travel is possible, they still can't fix a spine. They all decide to go look for the fusion room to see if they can get the spaceship to turn on. As they walk away, the movie does that cliche thing where a shadowy figure rushes past the camera while no one's looking just to scare the audience. But we later find out it doesn't make any sense because the monster hasn't been unleashed yet, so within the logic of the movie- Oh, I pissed myself. Hold on. We get another one of these recordings where Captain Guy talks about how the communication systems are failing and they can only receive incoming messages, and now half the crew have turned into monsters or something. We then cut to Coolio smoking a hookah. He's playing a character named 187, who's called that because that was his IQ before he went to college and smoked everything in sight. And now he's stupid. Yes, really. And they tell me 187 was his IQ before he enrolled at Berkeley Satellite Campus and started smoking everything in sight. Knowing the state of Western academia today, they could have just said he went to college and left it at that. Van Helsing yells at 187 to get on the Demeter, and a wide shot reveals he's sitting on a park bench in a garage before he gets up and walks past the boom mic. The professor spots the central control unit, which is just sitting in the middle of a big open room for some reason. Then 187 comes running in and says he found something, so Van Helsing, Humvee, and Blonde Lady follow him down some corridors. 
Another video log shows Captain Guy complaining about how nothing works and everyone's turning into monsters, which was already established. Then we cut to Mina telling the professor not to fix the ship because she has a bad feeling about it. But the professor explains in his posh British accent that she's being stupid. As a mentor to you, I have to impress upon you that you should rely as solely as possible on your intellect. That's how smart people talk. 187 leads Van Helsing, Humvee, and Blonde Lady into a room with a plastic mummy. Blonde Lady, her name's Aurora, by the way, tells 187 not to touch it. Then he and Humvee make fun of her, and even though she's second in command, they question her authority. Also, even though she's second in command, Van Helsing tells her she needs to tolerate disrespect from her subordinates. Captain, I don't need to take Aurora. this if you're gonna be a captain in the future, you're gonna have to learn to have a little patience with the men. 187 points out that it looks like the mummy tied himself to the chair, even though it doesn't. And then they notice the cross in his hands, but they don't know what it is. Oh, metal plus sign. Okay, this dude was in the mathematics. Van Helsing recognizes it as a crucifix, which Humvee points out were banned 200 years ago. Supposedly, I had a grand uncle who believed in God, but I can't say I ever met anybody who did. All the lights come on as the professor gets the power back on. Who's God? Nobody. Oh, that's edgy. So it turns out Christianity or religion or whatever is banned in the future, and most people don't even know what God is. This has no relevance to the plot. We get another pointless video from Captain Guy, and Van Helsing says he thinks the Demeter might be worth 15 million space bucks. Aurora says they should let the authorities check the ship before they bring it back to Earth, but Humvee laughs at her, so she puts up her pinky at him, because that's how they flip people off in the future, I guess. So the two girls are again salvaging the ship because they don't know what happened to the crew and it's spooky. But toxic masculinity prevails, and then the two black guys run off to find something to smoke. Hey, maybe we can find something to smoke. Come on, mama. Let's go. While wandering around, 187 says they should check the cargo bay because big ships like this one were used for smuggling drugs. But then the professor realizes that Mother 3 is about to separate from the Demeter, and he can't stop it. And of course, no one stayed behind on the Mother 3, so now they're all stuck on the Demeter and have no choice but to get it up and running again. Humvee and 187 find a big room full of coffins. 187 picks up a conveniently placed crowbar that was just sitting on the floor, and tries to pry open a coffin, reasoning that it might have drugs hidden in it. He cuts his hand, and then it turns out the coffin is full of sand. Mina tells Humvee the professor needs him, and 187 stays behind to open more coffins, but then his blood drips into the sand. Van Helsing finds a room full of crosses and exclaims, Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Even though Christianity was banned 200 years ago, and most people don't even recognize Christian symbols anymore, so that kind of vernacular probably would have faded out by now. He turns on a monitor and finds one of Captain Guy's logs explaining they left Transylvania Station. Transylvania? Is Transylvania. I was going to make a Rocky Horror Picture Show reference, but then I remembered that references are not jokes. Just then, Van Helsing hears a scream, so he gets the runs. I mean, he goes running. He and the others find 187 in the cargo hold with a broken leg, too freaked out to talk. They put him on a pool table in the rec room, I guess because this spaceship doesn't have a sick bay, and argue about who should pop his leg back into place. Aurora meets up with Van Helsing in the hallway, Mina interrupts, nothing happens. Nothing. Then the professor shows Van Helsing the bite marks on 187's neck, and even though they're looking at his neck, they don't notice him turning his head. Suddenly, 187 wakes up, and he's a vampire now, so he attacks them. After throwing Van Helsing across the room, 187 knocks the professor out of his wheelchair and starts stomping on him, then Van Helsing hits him with a pool stick, which just breaks cleanly along the line where the prop guys cut it. This tactic proves ineffective. But then Aurora comes in. Did I ever tell you how many times I see you and want to ejaculate all over your bazonkas? I think Coolio might have enjoyed playing this character a little too much. <laughs> I am a vampire! Of course, now he's not enjoying anything. So after 187 threatens to rape her several times, Aurora finally tries to shoot him, but bullets have no effect, so she drops the gun and runs. 187 chases her, but she gets away, so it goes back to the cargo bay and meets some guy in a stereotypical vampire outfit who he calls Master. The vampire tells 187 to kill everyone. Kill them all. 
gladly. Gladly. Van Helsing and Humvee walk around, nothing happens, and then we cut to Aurora, still behind the door she slams in 187's face, even though 187 has since walked all the way back to the cargo bay, so she must have been standing there for quite some time. Then the vampire shows up and proceeds to grope her with his Hot Topic finger armor before he bites her. Back in the rec room, the professor tells Mina to guard the door which they just left open. Then 187 grabs her and the door just kind of shuts itself. Van Helsing and Humvee show up. The professor tells them 187 got Mina. Then they leave him there alone and nearly shoot Aurora in the corridor. So have you seen 187? No, but I saw him. So you did see him? No. Him. So Aurora's being cryptic for no reason other than dramatic effect, and for all they know, she could be talking about the Finnish goth band. The professor sits in the rec room with a gun pointed at the door. The valve thing starts spinning, then he shoots a bunch of times. But it turns out it's just Van Helsing and the others. Aurora explains that him is Count Orlock from Transylvania, which is a planet of vampires. Transylvania is a planet in the remote Carpathian system. It's a planet of vampires. So what the hell is a vampire? So I guess in the year 3000, the myths and religions of today no longer exist, but they still have a concept of hell. Aurora explains what a vampire is, and that the vampires come from a dead planet, and Count Orlock is the last of his kind. This vampire dude, he's a brother? No, Humvee, he is not a black man. Excuse me for saying all this blood sucking stuff, that's some white people shit, right? This is how white writers think black people talk. Van Helsing points a gun at Aurora and looks for bite marks, suspecting she may have turned into a vampire like 187, but she doesn't have any bite marks, so I guess Orlock didn't really bite her. Regardless, they decide to tie her up. Then Van Helsing starts leading the professor back to the main deck so they can try to get the ship running. This is how vampires run. Blah, blah, blah. What the <laughs> Ugh, damn it! What the f**k's wrong with you? Oh, he broke again. Here's my $10 patrons. Alex Bones, Zach Black, Ashley Johnson, Game Plus, Luke, Caesar, Success, Bullen, Guy, Brody, James, Cameron, Dal Shaw, Cold Danny, 41, Cortez, Crimson Black, Scientist, Diesel Weasel, Duke Snuggles, Eduardo Sanchez, Enrique Fratari, Fractal Soraya, Ginger Jesus, Steve Pizzi, Aaron Independa, Ivan Stansbury, Jem 2, Jimmy Jim, Joel Burke, John Cleveland, Josh Leipart, Kaiser Wilhelm II, Lawrence A. Whittle Sr., Liz Wood Quebec, Levi Juggs, Lil Zerati, Lip Dick, Marco McBire, Mick Squeezy, Noble Team 33, Nolan Joseph, James Flood, Paco, Ricky Baruga, Salto, Salty Buckets, Shifting Flesh, Swiss Bat, The Random Night Lord, Thomas Brown, Tiberian Luke, Tony Belmonte, Toxic Masculinity, Twilight City Studios YouTube Channel, Poopar Super Mud, Wilker Thacy, X Derping, X Grand X, and Zenith. We cut back to Humvee and Aurora sitting in the rec room. Humvee's in front of a TV with a plain blue screen, which they probably wanted to CGI some sci-fi shit onto, but it didn't quite work out so they just left it. And Aurora tries to seduce him, but he doesn't fall for it. I know as soon as I let you up, you're gonna be all vampire with my black ass. Then we see the professor doing professor stuff until he fixes the navigation thing or whatever, and they plot a course for the nearest inhabited system and the spaceship starts moving. Aurora tells Humvee that she has to go to the bathroom, but he tells her to just piss in her pants. The professor and Van Helsing log onto Space Wikipedia or whatever, and find articles about vampires. Count Dracula, otherwise known as Orlock. So it turns out Orlock is Dracula. I don't know why this movie didn't just call him Dracula from the beginning, because this is a completely pointless reveal. Anyway, it turns out Van Helsing is the descendant of Dr. Van Helsing, the famous vampire slayer. I guess because his family has had the same name for the past thousand years. And Dracula probably wants to kill him for revenge. The professor gets to work researching ways to kill Dracula. So I guess there's a planet of vampires called Transylvania, and that implies the vampires are really aliens. But also there were vampires on Earth in the 1800s when Dr. Van Helsing was around. So I guess the vampire aliens came to Earth in the past, but for reasons unexplained, they're nearly extinct now. Unlike humans who will be extinct in a few years and I don't have to explain why. Back in the rec room, Humvee and Aurora hear someone knocking on the door. It's 187 begging to be let in. He actually pulls the us black guys gotta stick together card. You know how they treat us, brother? They don't care about us! And this dumb f actually falls for it. Van Helsing hears the commotion and runs back to the rec room where he shoots 187, but once again it doesn't work, and this prompts 187 to start villain monologuing. The high I get from being a vampire is even better than where I got to go with that Comptonian weed we got in. Comptonian asshole! 
Humvee stabs 187 with a pool stick, and that seems to do it. Aurora tells Van Helsing and Humvee to untire, but they still refuse, so Aurora explains that she's actually a Proteus IV, which is some kind of robot government agent who was sent to spy on them and their illegal activities. You've been under surveillance for the last three moon cycles. Van Helsing reasons they can use her to fight Dracula since her being a robot makes her basically immune to vampires, so he unties her. I wish they would make a robot woman who's immune to the smell of halitosis, that I wouldn't be doing this right now. The gang make their way back to the outdated video equipment room and tell the professor they killed 187 by stabbing him with a pool cue. And the professor says he read that you could kill a vampire by stabbing them in the heart with a wooden stake. 2950, they were still using organic wood for cues. So Humvee didn't know that would kill a vampire, he just winged it and it worked. The professor also explains that vampires hate crosses and sunlight kills them. So they come up with a plan to fly the spaceship to the nearest star, so the light from it can somehow penetrate their windowless spaceship and burn Dracula to death. Van Helsing and Aurora go back to the rec room to find more pool sticks. They find one and break it in half to make two stakes. Then they go to the cargo bay so they can open up the coffins and stab the vampires. The first few they open are full of sand, but then they find one with Mina inside, and she's a vampire now. So they stab her right between the tits. The one of the other coffins suddenly explodes open, so Van Helsing tells Aurora to go get Humvee, and I'm not sure why. Probably just to get her out of the room so the movie can have a dramatic one-on-one -on -one showdown between the hero and the villain. Except it isn't dramatic because they've never met, and Dracula doesn't even know who this guy is. What are you waiting for? I'm a Van Helsing. Van Helsing. That's right. I come from a long line of vampire killers. Dracula explains that he's waited a thousand years to destroy the Van Helsing bloodline or whatever. And now that you are finally here. The f was that? Aurora runs to the computer room and bangs on the door, yelling that Van Helsing needs help. But Humvee thinks it's another trick and refuses to open the door. So Aurora runs off and finds the room with the crosses, which she probably shouldn't even know about since Van Helsing never told anyone about it, and grabs a cross. The professor won't stop muttering about how they're all gonna die, so Humphy grabs his rifle and leaves. I'd rather face that vampire and listen to your sorry ass. Then we see Humphy walk around the corridor, and we can see that his flashlight is mounted on the top of his rifle, where a scope or red dot sight would normally go, so he can't even use the sights. And he runs into Aurora, who tells him Van Helsing needs his help in the cargo bay. Then we cut to the professor who, being a genius, decided to leave the locked control room and wheel himself down the dark corridor without any protection. And predictably, he runs into Dracula, who offers to turn him into a vampire, which I guess means he would be able to walk again. But just as he's about to accept Dracula's offer, Dracula hears a noise, gets scared, and runs away. You know, like a big bad vampire would. Humvee and Aurora find Van Helsing crawling around the cargo bay, having apparently gotten his ass kicked, and he suddenly turns into a vampire and tackles Humvee. Aurora pulls the pool stick out of Mina's chest and stabs Van Helsing with it, killing him. But then Mina comes back to life, so Humvee stabs her again. I guess you have to leave the stake in a vampire to make it stay dead. I also guess you don't have to stab them in the heart anymore, because he clearly stabbed her in the lower torso. So our main character is dead now. Good for him. Humvee and Aurora make their way back to the control room and find the professor slumped over in his wheelchair. Aurora just starts stabbing him, totally unprompted. What the hell? So it turns out the professor was turned into a vampire at some point. Maybe Dracula came back to bite him or something? I guess nobody thought to cut out the part where he ran away. It's not like that added anything to the movie, it just kind of makes it make less sense. Whatever. How did you know? I didn't. Another coffin randomly explodes for no reason, so Humvee and Aurora rush to shut the door, but Dracula sticks his arm in it, so they shut it on his arm and sever it, and it came off pretty easily, too. Is he made of vegetable matter or something? So while Dracula's doing that, Humvee and Aurora realize the spaceship is gonna fly right into a star in 12 hours, and neither of them know how to divert the course now that the professor's dead. So they know they're gonna die, but then Aurora lets Humvee in on a little secret. Before that, I was a Proteus 3.2 PB. PB. Pleasure bot. So Humvee and Aurora decide to spend their last few moments alive f***ing. We get one last recording of Captain Guy, and this time, 
He explains that he decided to sacrifice himself and the Demeter to prevent Dracula from making it to Earth. And then the spaceship abruptly explodes. I don't know why, the self-destructing failed earlier, but I guess it just works now, I don't know. Anyway, it freeze frames on the explosion, and then the credits roll. So that's Dracula 3000. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's this guy again. I, I don't care, the video's over. Thanks for watching my video, but you gotta like and subscribe, and also leave a comment because the algorithm likes it. And, uh, uh, happy Halloween, I guess. Bye.